Hey everybody, this is Jim the Tabletop Engineer and welcome to a new playthrough video for my Patreon. If you are a patron and you're watching this, let me thank you for your support. Uh, your support allows me to keep making these playthrough videos and also using better sound equipment, better video equipment, bigger tables, and that kind of stuff. Today I am going to be playing a game called Five Parsecs from Home Bug Hunt. This, this is actually four books in one. It's three expansion books for Five Parsecs from Home. And the fourth book is a set of rules called Bug Hunt, right here at the very back of the book. Uh, I've gone ahead and set up my table. This is a three by three. And uh, this game can be played in t indoors. You could have like an interior of a spaceship or an outpost. And I probably will have some of those coming up. But right now I'm using what I have, which is an outdoor uh, science uh, outpost that has called for assistance. They are being overrun with bugs. What else? All right, let me explain a few things about this game and the way this campaign series is going to work. I am typically going to film the setup of the table and the placement of certain obstacles and objectives and things. I'm going to film that in a shorter video uh, that will be separate from the actual gameplay video. So if this kind of thing doesn't really matter to you, and if, if hearing me or watching me make the rolls and placing the tokens in various places before the game begins, you won't have to watch that. You can jump straight to the game playthrough video. Uh, now, in the game playthrough video, I probably will still point out where certain objectives are and things, but what I need you to understand is when, <clears throat> when you set a game up of Bug Hunt, uh, there is some pre-game setup that is, I wouldn't call it like substantial, but it's there. So what I need to do is um, I need to define certain locations for objectives, uh, roll for certain values of, of creatures and other stuff. So I'm going to do that in this video. So feel free to pause this and skip it and go straight to the gameplay video if you want to see Bug Hunt. All right, if you're still with me, I guess you are interested in following along on the mission generation uh, part of the game. This is what's required before you actually play a game. It's not a lot, but there's more than what I'm used to with some war games. If you have the rule book or if you have the compendium, uh, you can turn to page 184 and I'll be following along, or we'll, I'll, you can follow along as I set it up. So here's the deal. This is the play area. Um, there are going to be six dice. One, two, three, four, five, six. These are placed uh, in a, not a random fashion, but on key locations. It tells you to put them where you think the action would occur. And you put them starting at number one, and I'm gonna put number one here above the power generator. And then I'm just gonna rotate this and move around. I'm gonna put the second one, and they need to be about six inches from the edge. I'm gonna put number two, I'll put it right over here uh, near the sewage plant. Just keep spinning it around. Number three, I will put up here on the bridge between the buildings. Number four, I'm gonna put over here in this corner, uh, just, just to keep, uh, keep moving around. Number five is gonna go here near the fusion generator, the fusion plant, I'll put it behind it here. And number six will go over here near the gun. I'll put it up near the, the orbital cannon. Number six, all right. Now they need to be uh, more. I think the, I think the rules say to keep them like more than twelve inches apart. No, it doesn't say that. It just says keep them near the key areas. So you place the six dice: one, two, three, four, five, six. Then you take three d6 and you roll them. And it's the numbers that come up that will be kept out of the dice you've put up. So it's possible that three will be kept if you roll doubles. Uh, only two will be kept, and if you roll triples, only one of those dice will stay. I rolled a one, uh, I'm sorry, I rolled a two, four, and a six, the evens. So I am going to remove the odds. You remove the ones that don't match the dice. So I'll take off one, 
I'll take off three, and I'll take off five. That leaves two, four, and six. Now, as I said, you, you roll the three dice. What happens if um, you roll doubles? Well, uh, then the, that number stays, but it becomes what's called a vital objective. These are where objective markers are going to be placed. A double is a vital objective. It's worth more points. A triple, which is just going to leave one die, that becomes a critical location, which means you really almost have to do it to, to be successful for the mission. But in this case, I've got three normal objectives. So after you get the objectives, there is a table on page 185. There are six possible objectives. You can roll doubles um, for objectives, but what I'm going to do just for, for my own good, if I roll a uh, a duplicate, I'm going to roll again because I'd like to try out all of the objectives. So I'm going to roll a die for objective number. We'll start at the lowest number, which is number two, which is over here. Number two, uh, I roll a die and it is number four, which is retrieve. A trooper moving into contact and spending a combat action can pick up the package. If the figure becomes a casualty, the package is dropped. To complete the objective, you must hold the package when evacing. Evacing is at the end of the game when you leave the field. All right, so I'm going to take number two, and I'm going to replace it with a one of my blue tokens, which are the objectives. And I, I rolled a four, which is retrieve. Let me find that token. I took them all. I didn't take them all out. Come on, where's retrieve? Oh, here it is. Retrieve. And I'll put that right there. That is objective number, or that's one of the objectives. Let's spin this around to number four, which is right here. I'll roll a d6. I rolled a three, which is secure. And that is going to be scout, hack, patrol, beacon. Here it is, secure. I'll replace that dice with a blue token called secure. And then my last one, yeah, I, I, it's a duplicate. Let me roll it again. A two, which is a scout. Scout. The, uh, the objective is completed at the end of the round during which a trooper mo moves into contact with a marker. That is going to be placed at number six, which is up here. Right there. All right. So I have my three objectives. And by the way, the secure objective, it says the objective is completed if at the end of a round a trooper is within six inches and no enemies are within six inch. So I've got my three objectives. And let's see, what was that? I don't know how that got up there. Uh, oh, these three soldiers are my core soldiers, red, blue, and green. Those are the three that I will be following. Uh, they will be going on my missions until they muster out, meaning they've, they've got enough missions under the belt they can retire or they die. So red, blue, and green, remember that. So now that I have my objectives picked, I have to select the mission difficulty. Now, there are five different levels of difficulty from easy all the way up to just plain deadly. And they have funny names. I'm Too Pretty to Die is the easiest. Living Nightmare is the hardest. And Mess Me Up is right in the middle, and it has no adjustment. So I'm going to play Mess Me Up, which is like the standard game. No modifications to it. Now... The next thing I have to do is I have to do what's called determine the mission priority. Uh, some missions, it says, are, are not important. They're like a recon, and some are the heart of the storm, meaning they're very valuable to the war effort. You roll 2d6s and you pick the lowest, so let's do that. <laughs> I rolled a 1 and a 3. So my, for my first game, this is probably good. A 1 is the lowest priority. So this is just get in there, try to do the objectives, and get out. It says... Uh, the higher the priority, the more deadly or the more resistance you will encounter. So obviously a one is probably going to be pretty easy. If a vital objective is on the table, you increase the priority by one. If a critical objective is on the table, you increase it by two. Uh, and there's a reason for those modifications. Um, that number, by the way, is going to be related to how many other troops you bring to the table. Now, um, the next is I determine the spawn rating. The spawn rating is how many spawn points are going to be on the table where additional creatures can possibly make an appearance. It says um, the spawn rating is equal to the priority rating minus one. <laughs> so in my case, the spawn rating is zero, meaning there won't be any spawns. Once I've wiped the creatures out, they're dead. Um, after this, you select loadout. Well, I've already done that with my uh, heroes, um, I think. I've, I did that in the character video. 
Now we get to step seven. This is where you get to determine your bonus force uh, addition. You receive support points equal to your priority. In this case, my priority is a one. For each point you have, you're going to get to roll on a table that allows you to bring extra soldiers in. It could be a single sniper. It could be a four-man fire team. It could be an alien ally, you know, mercenary squad. There's a whole bunch. There's like probably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There are twelve in all. That's pretty cool. And uh, again, you can you. It's based on that number. So remember the number one. I'm going to get one roll on that table to determine who my extra help is. But you can modify this roll. You can make it go up or down. One's the lowest. You can, you can uh, make it go up or down using reputation points. Your crew, your, your core group, is going to get reputation as they take on missions. And you can burn reputation points to affect the story. And one of the ways you affect it is to increase or decrease this number. As much as I would like to increase it, I don't think they have any rep. I think one of my guys has one rep point, and I'm not willing to burn that this early in the game, especially for a low-level mission like what, what I've ro rolled here. So it says each point will grant you one roll on the support table, but here's the deal. You don't just get the, the support. You have to roll to see if, if it's available, and if you don't roll over a certain number, you lose that, that roll, and you get nothing. So I only get one roll, and I better make it. Now, the rolls are on page 188 and 189. And for, for each different option, it could be from one figure up to a five-man team, I believe is the highest. Yeah, there's a five-man team. They have a roll. You'll roll 2d6, and you have to meet or beat the number in the um, target number. So, for example, if I just want a single weapon support officer, just one, I have to roll a four or higher on, on the, the total of two dice. That's not, that's not too hard to do. But let's say I want a, a Karen, which is an alien ally, Karen Assault Marine Team, eight plus. I would get a four-figure team, and they have high stats, and they get trooper armor, but the odds of me rolling an eight or higher on 2d6, well, you can do the math. It's not as good as rolling a four. Um, I would much prefer to have uh, a team uh, to add to my three, and the lowest team on here, there's a two-figure team with carbines for a six plus, a, a sniper is a six plus, a sergeant is a five plus, he comes with a shotgun and a boarding sword, uh, colonial militia, which is a five-figure team, is a five or higher, a fire team is seven or higher, let's go, do I want a sniper, let's, I don't want to waste this roll. I don't want to roll lower than I do, than, than the number. Let's go for a colonial, nah, this, this may not be that hard. Let's go for a weapon support. It's a four plus, and you get to outfit that figure with your choice of light machine gun, incinerator, power claw, hyper blaster, or plasma rifle, which are powerful weapons. So let's go ahead and roll it. I got an eight. Well, okay, so I'm gonna get to bring one new soldier, a weapon support, and he's going to be a silver base. All my support guys are going to have a silver base. So I will put him up here, and that is my team for this mission. So after you roll your, um, after you roll your team, we have to do what's called place your tactical locations. All right, so tactical locations are things that can give you an advantage if you can get to them. You have to be able to get to them uh, and, and, and make a roll. Everything in this game costs. You have to make a roll. You're not guaranteed anything. So the tactical locations pair with something called signals, which are, the signals is like an option. You don't have to use it, but it's sort of like the same thing with, uh, it's the same thing with tactical locations. It could give you, it could give you a benefit, it, it might not, you just don't know. It's extra rolls uh, that you're gonna take, um, things that you can do while you're in the battle. So um, again, you, you may or may not wanna do it. Uh, it's on page 208, I am going to do it and I'll explain it in the game rather than right now. So what I'm gonna do is you roll a D6 and this is the number of signals and you add that to a number of tactical locations to add up to six. 
So I rolled a four. So I will have four signals, four signals, and two tactical locations. So one, two, the, the tactical locations are purple and the signals are gray. And the way you do this is it says you place them, um, uh, should be spread out as evenly as possible around the battlefield, and if possible, should be placed at least two inches from objectives, which basically means I'm going to be pairing them, one pair will have two signals, within two inches of a, an objective. So let me do this. I'm going to put a signal here and an objective uh, and a tactical here. They're two inches from this objective. Let's spin this around. Uh, here's, well, let me go get those. <laughs> I kind of need those. Uh, let's, um, let's come over here to the secure objective. I will put a tactical here and a signal here. So they're within two inches. And then the last one was where, oh, it was right here near the sewage plant. Uh, it's two signals. I'll put one there <clears throat> and one there. And they are within two inches of the objective. The next thing we do is we place what are called contact markers. These are these red ones that I have. These are, if you think about the movie Aliens and Hudson with his uh, motion tractor, you know, something's there, but you don't know what it is yet. You're getting a beep, beep, beep. That's what these are. And what you do is you place one on each objective. So I'll put one on top of the blues, the blue uh, tokens to represent unknowns. These are possible creatures. And where was the other one? Right here on top. Okay. And throughout the game, these will move either randomly or sometimes with an objective. They will move. And the only way you can determine what they are is when, when one of your heroes is within a certain vicinity and you make a certain roll. Then it's revealed what the enemy is. Otherwise, they hide. Think face hugger from Aliens. They could be behind a wall or just hiding on the sea. You don't see them until you become aware of them. Um, that's what I love about this, this game. <laughs> All right. Now, the next thing you do is you set up your troops. Oh, by the way, depending on the level of the, the, the uh, deadliness of the game, you may place extra contact markers. For, for my standard one, it calls for no extra contact. So just one per objective. Now, your force is assumed to land outside the battlefield and on a random edge within three inches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll a D10. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I'll reroll nines and tens. I rolled a four. One, two, over here, three, four. All right, so my team will be starting on this side, and they have to start at least 12 inches from an objective. Well, here's an objective. So if I measure 12 from there, they would have to start over here or over here, anywhere over here. So I'm going to start them over here. So I will place my soldiers over here, all four of them, and they are definitely 12 away from that one and definitely 12 away from that one. So this is a good starting point for the game. Um, they are all uh, more than 12 inches from an objective. Now, the last thing we do is we determine uh, tactical locations. Um, these are sites that can give you potential value. The, remember those tokens that I put that are purple? Um, you roll on those when one of your soldiers gets within three inches of a purple. So right here is a purple. Oh, no, no, no. Hold on. Let me spin it around. Right there is a purple. So when one of my soldiers gets within three of this, I will roll on a table on page 191, and that will tell me what kind of benefit this could give me. Could, because I don't automatically get it. I have to roll a D6 and add my savvy uh, trait, which most of my soldiers have a savvy of zero. And if you roll a five or higher, you trigger it, and it can help you. Um, some of them are like... Closing, bar setting up barricades or distracting the enemy, things like that. We'll get to those in the game, and I'll roll for those. You Again, you roll for those in game. Same thing goes for these markers. I won't know what I'm fighting until I get within a certain distance of those. And that distance, by the way, is... Uh, they're called contact markers. Um, the contact marker, you, you have to get within sight and not cover within six inches 
in order to be able to de detect them. If they are in cover or out of sight, you can only detect them when you're within three inches. So you can kind of see how this game um, gets a little nerve wracking. It's like some of the settings take place inside a ship, like maybe a dark ship or an outpost or something like that. But I've got an outdoor situation for my first one. But as in future games, I'm hoping, up to, I'm hoping to open up the insides or maybe set up some other type of terrain that will give me like corridors and, and, and rooms that are, that are closed off and sealed, but only via through a door. All right, that is it. This game is ready to be played. Um, I have placed all the objectives. I have placed the signals and the tactical, uh, the, the, the uh, tactical locations. I've got my soldiers set up and the game is ready to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some paperwork and some note taking ready to do and I, am, uh, I need to do just some cleanup and then I will get to the game in the next video. As I said earlier, I will always try to have a setup video where I, where I walk through setting up the mission, uh, and then I will have the actual mission, which will not contain all this stuff. So if, you don't, if you're not interested in this, you just want to see the gameplay, you're going to always want to look for the mission. Otherwise, look for the, um, for the mission briefing videos. This is what I'm going to be calling the mission briefing videos. All right, that's all I got. This is Jim, the Tabletop Engineer. Thanks for joining me as I worked through five parsecs from home bug hunt. Uh, I've been looking forward to playing this for so long um, and I hope you enjoy it. And again, if you were one of my patrons, thank you, thank you for supporting me so I can do playthrough videos like this for you. If you have any questions, post them in the video below. Uh, I will be back very shortly with the next video. You won't have to wait too long, I promise. Uh, but in the next video, I'm going to get my troopers on this field and we're going to kill some bugs. All right, this is Jim the Tabletop Engineer. Thanks for joining me. Until next time, everybody, take care.